I'm thankful. I in in the the prayer service. Boy, there was there was something going on. I believe that that we saw the miraculous in this place, and I want to hear some testimonies about that. I believe that the Lord intervened in some things tonight. Um, he is one that intervenes. You know that. You know that. Amen. He is one that that steps in when nothing else, nothing else will work. God will work. He is faithful. He is faithful. He is faithful. Last week, our youth took a incredibly difficult trip. As a matter of fact, they took a trip, and the Bells took a trip too. Um, and uh, I, you know, you just look at some things sometimes, and you got to know that boy, hell is fighting with everything it's got. But with everything it's got, it's never enough. Never forget that. Don't forget that. With everything hell throws at you, it's never enough. It's never enough. Because we have the spirit of the Lord. Someone wrote a song a few years back. We have the spirit of David. David had a spirit of passion. And, and wow, what an incredible man he was. What an incredible man he, he I'll, I'll, I'll tell you, I know David had his faults. But I haven't yet met a man that had no faults. And if you don't think he's got any faults, ask his wife and she will fill you in. Because she knows them all. She has them written down in her diary, probably. I'm kidding. But gentlemen across the room, listen to me tonight. Gentlemen, listen to me. If you would seek to be as David, you'd be a great man of God. <laughs> we get so distracted by the million things... And, and, and for men, it's different because there is the expectation of providing and protecting. And that can't stop. But sometimes we do have to ask ourselves, when have we provided enough? And make sure that while we're trying to provide more, we don't reprioritize or deprioritize what should be. So just pay attention to that, gentlemen. Uh, the kids went on this trip, got sidetracked there. That was good, though. That was needful. Um, the kids went on this trip. Um, if you haven't seen any of the video, uh, we, we have all of the videos and all of the audio from, from these services. Um, unbelievable. Unbelievable. 22, 23,000 people gathered together, lifting up the name of the Lord. They, they said, anytime you have, well, this is a fact, anytime you have a professional sound crew, which they had this massive, unbelievable sound system in these places, they always are measuring what's called the sound pressure level, the SPL. We measure it in this, in this room to try to make sure we don't part your hair during the worship service. Um, they measure the sound pressure level, and they said, I don't know what all the parameters were, but the numbers achieved in the, the loudness of the worship of those kids exceeded what is recorded in the Guinness Book of World Records. Man, listen. There is a generation that does want to worship God. And there's a generation coming that still wants to worship God, that still believes in worship and still believes that there's value in lifting up their voice and honoring the King of Kings. So, so they went to North American Youth Congress. And I hope none of them talk as long as I have. Um, but we asked for everyone that went that would to come and just testify tonight. And tell you a little bit about what went on and how it impacted them. And uh, so I have a list here. Um, does anybody want to go first? 
Ashlyn is going to go first. Amen. I am, I am thankful. You can come up here, bud. I am thankful for what the Lord is doing among these, these young people, and I want to hear. All right. I think it's like through divine intervention that I'm up here right now because <laughs> I really didn't want to be up here, but we do have a zealous pastor's wife. <laughs> Um, you're welcome. <laughs> I am uh, very nervous, so usually I forget stuff, so I wrote it down. A couple of things stood out to me when I went to NAYC. One, there was a lot of socializing. Typically, I'm not in tune with socializing, so it was a little difficult for me to get into, <laughs> into that realm. And uh, another thing was that our church nowadays is super talented. Like, we had this competition where many people... <laughs> Sorry for my shaking, but I'm a little nervous. And uh, many people in this competition competed in this, in this thing, and they were so talented, and I was actually inspired. Yeah. Lastly, I, I think that I noticed was that this generation has really big shoes to fill. The past preachers that are now waiting for the Lord's coming have left their mantles. And for this next generation, we need to take up those mantles. I have a mantle, and all my peers have mantles to take up. God blessed me with a mantle, and with the understanding that I need to run with it. Amen. That was one of the messages preached. Uh, and you'll, you'll notice that one message will impact one and, and not as much the other. But there's, there's a moment for everybody in this, in this thing. All right. Um, I can call on you, but, but anybody want to go next? Come on, Corbin. Everybody's. Amen. I'm. I'm thankful for Corbin. I'm thankful for what the Lord is doing in his life and what the Lord has in store for him. Amen. All right. Uh, well, when I went to NAYC, I didn't know what to expect. You know, it's my first year. Uh, I'm not even a year old in church yet. And uh, worshiping with 20,000 people, having church, that is that's crazy. You know what I mean? And it, it's just, it blows my mind. And I don't know if, I don't know about the youth or my youth class, but I, have you ever just thought, man, like what we get to, uh, what we're privileged to like see? We get to see the uh, glory of God every Sunday. You know, every Wednesday we come, every prayer service. You know, we come in here and we ex we know that our God will answer our prayers, and it's just it's it's fascinating. It, it just blows my mind, you know, that we get to pr be privileged to do this. And uh, like Ashlyn was saying, mantles. It's time to run with it. You know, we got shoes to fill. We're the church of tomorrow, and we need to be ready for what's coming. And that's it. Amen. So, so true. Next. Lexi, come on. I don't know why y'all are so nervous. I do this all the time. Well, my NAYC started five days early. I got there on Saturday night for our national Bible quizzing, and it was really fun. It was really cool. But come Wednesday, being there five days, and it's Oklahoma. If you've ever been in Oklahoma, <laughs> it's a terrible state. Don't ever go there. <laughs> Literally, not joking. Anyways, being there five days, 110 degrees, you're burning up, and you're tired. Well, I felt really convicted because come Wednesday, I was really tired. I was exhausted, and I wanted to go home. I told my mom, I said, I'm, I just want to go home. We came off five weeks of camp, and I want to I wanna rest before we go back to school. Well, Wednesday night, he talks about submission, <laughs> obedience, <laughs> um, all these lists of things that I'm sitting there. And if you ever felt in a crowd that you're like, oh, my gosh, he's talking to me. Like, you just know it. And you feel so convicted, and you're like, 
really? Like, really? Why this? And so I was sitting there, and I'm like, oh, my goodness, why? And so later on that night, I had a banquet to go to, a, a Bible quizzing banquet, and I saw a friend of mine, and she is phenomenal. She's from Missouri, and um, I didn't know this, but she, her parents are in the middle of divorce, and this August is finally her divorce, and she's been in Bible quizzing for 12 years, and she said um, she was practicing five hours a day, like five hours a day studying, and she was like, this is what's holding me together. I had no idea, and so it was Friday night that I saw her, and I still had no idea that she was going through all this, and I'm sitting here, and I'm complaining in my seat, and I see her. She's in the next section, and I go, and I pray for her, and she turns to me, and she, with tears, she says, my parents are in the middle of divorce, and this is what's holding me together. And I thought, oh, my word. You know, how blessed are we, our youth group? We come here. We've been raised in church. I've been a Bible quizzer for three years, and I love it. But she's been holding on for 12 strong years. Her parents are in the middle of this divorce. And North American Youth Congress just didn't change mine, Corbin, Ashland's, Sierra's lives. It changed 60 other thousand lives. Man, how quickly do we do get focused in on our stuff? It's hard. Well, I, well indeed. Um, if you don't know, Lexi, uh, Lexi joined with another church and quizzed with uh, with their team, and they went to nationals, which that is a big, fat, hairy deal, y'all. And what what place did you guys come in? Eighteenth out of how many were there? 57 teams, but um, those 57 teams were, were the top teams in their states from all over the country, so it really was tremendous. Jake, you want to follow your sister? So, um, I actually, I don't, this is going to sound bad, but when we all get to heaven, all the people that don't make it in is going to Oklahoma. I loved NAYC, but my favorite part was watching Little Lexi Bible Quiz. I've never been a Bible Quizzer. I always thought, man, I'm too cool for school to do this. <laughs> that sounds awful, but if I had to do it over again, I've spent 90% of my life giving it to athletics. But I watched 200 children give all they got to God. And I, don't, I haven't been doing the best lately in church. I know that sounds awful, and I'm telling you guys all this. But seeing 200 children give it all to God, it's a ministry. And they don't realize how much they affected me up there. I could quote 90% of Proverbs now. <laughs> but I watched all these kids give everything, everything that I gave to athletics, all the little things that I did and took away from church, they gave it to Bible quizzing, to learning the word. And um, there was a guy talking, Brother Fobear, he's the headmaster. He, um, he's talking about how this is a ministry. And it really, really is. I loved Bible quizzing, and if I had to do it over again, I would. So if any of you guys are on the fence on whether, hey, I don't know if I'm, I'm for Bible quizzing or I'm too cool for school, you're really not. <laughs> you're really not. Bible quizzing is where it's at. They're, they're great. So that's all I've got to say. That was a lot. Amen. Maybe you're going to be a coach one day, Jake. You, you could probably be a halfway decent Bible quizzing coach, I, I, I imagine. So, amen, that's beautiful. That, that is beautiful. You know, I, I was a Bible quizzer when I was a kid. Brother Tommy was a, was a top-tier Bible quizzer when he was a, a kid. Um, I bet there's not a time that I'd step into the pulpit and preach that, I, that quizzing things that I learned in quizzing don't cross my mind, even cross the pulpit in, in, as I minister. Uh, it is an incredible thing. So it, it's a powerful thing, and I'm thankful that, that we have it available to us. Um, let's see. It's down to Cece and Taylor. Is there, is there more? Cece? And, well, Andrew Andrews is coming. He's last. Poor Andrew. He's last. Well, Cece, come on. Hello. <laughs> um, 
Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, I don't really know how to put it into words, like what we've experienced at Congress, just because it was so, there was so much to it. And it was kind of like overwhelming to see so many people. But at the same time, it was like humbling to see so many people. It was like, you are one person out of all these people, but each of us have like a purpose in the kingdom of God. So it's just, it's kind of cool to like, you know, you're walking the streets of Oklahoma, sweating, <laughs> dying, <laughs> in your church clothes, <laughs> right after a shower. But you see so many others doing the same thing. And a lot of people, you know, around the city were like, where are you guys from? Like, we see all of you from the same convention. And it's just a really awesome witness to be able to show, like, what we do. And, you know, it's just, and I thought the really cool thing was we actually reached people working in the stadium, in the arena. I think it was six, six staff workers in the arena got the Holy Ghost while we were there. <laughs> yeah. And I don't, I, I mean, if I didn't have the Holy Ghost and I were just sitting there feeling it and seeing what everyone else was doing, I would probably have gotten the Holy Ghost too. That's just me. <laughs> but um, it's just kind of humbling because, you know, we're here for like, you know, two years and then you get there and you realize that you kind of get in your little mumbo jumbo like routine and you get there and you're like, wow, there's so much more to this than you realize on a daily basis. And so it's just kind of awesome to have that reminder that, wow, God is awesome and he can do so much for everyone. And so. Amen. Taylor, where's Taylor? Last I saw you, you were back there. All right, to save the shortest for last. <laughs> NAYC 2015. It was great. <laughs> I'm glad you brought your notes for that. <laughs> Amen. Amen. What a tremendous thing that is, though. In two years, it's coming to Indianapolis. It's going to be at Lucas Oil Stadium. It's going to save us a blooming fortune in gas. But um, there, there's a video floating around. They're, they're advertising already for the 2016 Youth Congress. And I believe it says four years ago was the first time that Youth Congress was in a basketball arena. And I believe that was in Nashville. Or, or, or I, don't, I don't know. But um, then this year, the first time that they had to rent two buildings just to house the thing. In 2016 will be the first time it's ever been in a football stadium. It's going to be at Lucas Oil Stadium. And I'm just believing Indiana is so central to the United States. And I'm just believing that instead of there being twenty to 25,000, we're going to see 40,000 or more people gathered wouldn't it be incredible to walk into lucas oil stadium and it's louder for jesus than andrew luck wouldn't that be incredible wouldn't it be amazing to walk in there and see forty thousand people that came to lift up the name of jesus amen 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 listen in this day it is more important than we have ever seen to reach people Amen. And what an incredible thing that is and what a boost it is to this generation that is coming up. And, and I just am so um, thankful for the United Pentecostal Church. I don't talk about the United Pentecostal Church a ton around here um, because people don't know a whole lot of, uh, of the heritage of it. But I'm telling you, I am so thankful that we're part of something bigger than our church. We have missionaries in almost 200 countries. We, we, I'm connected to so many missionaries uh, 
in, through social media, and I get reports through Twitter and Facebook constantly of what God is doing all over the world. And it's because we are a part of something so great, the United Pentecostal Church. And the United Pentecostal Church established that meeting, the North American Youth Congress, way back in like 1977. I remember one of the very first ones in Memphis, Tennessee, and there was like two or 3,000 people. And now it's 20 and 25,000. It's incredible. I am so thankful to be a part of of the United Pentecostal Church. It matters. It really is a wonderful thing. Amen. I asked Andrew tonight to, to go last, not because I don't like him, but I asked Andrew, there's a call of God on his life, and I asked him to, to come tonight and, and say a little bit more than what everybody else was going to say, to actually have a word to deliver to us from the word of God. And I want you to stand tonight because he's delivering the word. And I believe the Lord has spoken to him. I asked him right over here about that last week or two weeks ago. And he said, does it have to be about Youth Congress? And I said, absolutely not. It, I just want you to, to, to come and bring a word from the Lord. And, and he had something already working in his spirit. And I'm thankful for that. And I believe that, that um, Andrew has a word from the Lord tonight. And I'm so thankful that he's coming tonight. Would you just worship the Lord tonight and create an atmosphere that's conducive to receiving the word? Amen. Come on, lift your hands. Let's honor God. We love you, Jesus. God, I want to hear from you. I want to hear from you. Don't stop praying. Pray that I don't fail first. <laughs> Lord, I ask that you come down and touch this service tonight, God. Lord, you know, you know what you've given me, Lord, the, the, the message that you've given me, Lord. I ask that you would be able to let me convey it to these people, God, Lord, that you would pour out an anointing through me tonight, God, and speak through me, Lord, that I can reach out and, and preach what you've given, given me to say, God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, I definitely have to get all this NAYC stuff out of the way. You guys can go ahead and be seated. I've always wanted to say that. <laughs> I have to agree with Jake and Lexi. If you've never been to Oklahoma City, don't go, because that place is terrible. That is hot. It is very hot. But it was great to be there for NAYC. Um, as many of you know, I'm a huge football fan, huge football fan. And Pastor Jacob kind of touched on it a little bit. The roar on Friday night of NAYC was, was incredible. The Genesis um, Book of World Records has the, the decimals reader, the highest sound, whatever, however you want to say it, rated at 142 Point two decibels. Okay, that was reached last year at a Kansas City football game with 79,000 people in attendance. All right, we reached on a Friday night with 18,000 people in the main stadium. One was it? 130, 134.2. 23% less people with that's 18,000 people. 23 less people. 23 less. How do I say this? 23% less amount of people in that stadium, and we reached that. Can you imagine what it was like on there on a Friday night? Uh, see, my dad is deaf, but if he would have been there, he might have heard something. <laughs> uh, Brother David K. Bernard sent out a tweet after service Friday night, and he said, NAYC venue staff said it was the largest attendance for any event. Loudest noise ever recorded was in Friday p.m. service, where three of the event staff just on Friday night received the baptism of the Holy Ghost. I was um, playing around on Instagram on the way home, and my dad will probably kill me because I'm not supposed to use that much data. But <laughs> I, I seen a post on Facebook, and I just want to read it to you. I'm going to uh, quote it. It says, we went to breakfast this morning at McDonald's on the way home from NAYC. And there was this young man that told us that a friend brought him to service last night at NAYC 15. He said he used to be Baptist, but received the Holy Ghost for the first time last night, and is going to start looking for an apostolic Pentecostal church in his area. He said, I've never been in a church service for more than five hours before and not yawned. <laughs> yeah, that's how powerful it was. I was upset when I had to leave because I wanted to stay and praise God. See, I don't care about what's going on in all these services and all this food and stuff that's going on at NAYC. There's something powerful about the presence of God reaching down with 18,000 young people where we can just raise our hands and worship God. Amen. See, NAYC isn't just about the youth group going, but it's about the community that's there. This young man worked at a McDonald's around the Oklahoma City. We reached a man working at McDonald's at, at Oklahoma City just because we were praising God. Not from some apostolic church that we all came to. No, we were able to reach down and touch the city. <laughs> but, um, see, NAYC is powerful. 
And it does great things. There's healing, there's strength, and there's blessing there. But what happens after NAYC? What happens after we have a service like we did last Sunday night? Or after we have that prayer meeting or that fast is over? What happens between feeling the anointing and feeling trapped in a, in a world of sin? What happens between your blessing and feeling alone? What happens between victory and being defeated? What happens between being strengthened and feeling weak, destroyed, and powerless? You see, what happens is we fall asleep behind the wheel on our walk with God. According to the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration, approximately 100,000 crashes a year are caused by drowsy driving in the U.S. alone. Approximately 71,000 people are injured annually as a result of drowsy driving. Sadly, 1,500 of these people die. Reasons people fall asleep behind the wheel? Workload, a daily life, a, a social life, trying to keep up with what they have to do on, the, on a daily basis. It's sad that people keep people tired and distracted from the road to the point of death. The same goes for the church today. Teenagers go from NAYC to being distracted. Parents go from a prayer meeting to being distracted. Money, fear, carelessness, media, and politics keep attention on the things of this world instead of our walk with God. When was the last time you checked Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, or CNN? 10 minutes? 30 minutes? By raising of hands, don't be ashamed because I'm going to raise my hand too. How many of you guys have checked, checked your phone since church started? Yeah? Three of you? I know some of you are lying. Don't even lie. This entire front row is lying. <laughs> When was the last time you fasted, witnessed, repented, or read your Bible? A day? Two days? A week? But you can check your phone in the middle of service. And you wonder why you can't seem to stay focused on your walk with God. You wonder why you can't seem to be undistracted by the things of this world when you're so focused on the things that are surrounding you. 79% of teenage motor vehicle crash, crashes Crash deaths in 2012 were passenger vehicle occupants. The others were pedestrians, 10%, motorcyclists, 5%, bicyclists, 3 riders of all terrain vehicles, 1%, and people of other kind of vehicles, 2%. You see, one day, it's going to come to an end. This world's going to pass over. And I don't know about you, but I plan on seeing God. But some of us aren't going to be so lucky. And some of us are going to turn around and see that we weren't the only people that were going down this path. Because while you were so distracted with the things of this world and so distracted on what's going on in your personal life, you forgot to f look around and see that people are following you. There's people that are looking at you, seeing which direction you're going, seeing which way you're going, and you're going to go down a path that's not right for them. But see, you're going to take them there, and it's going to be on you. Because you were so distracted with things that are going on to even realize that you were leading. You had people following you. Coworkers, friends, loved ones, because you were too busy, distracted with the things of this world. Matthew 14 and 22, it said, Immediately Jesus made his disciples get into the boat and go before him to the other side when he sent the multitudes away. And when he sent the multitudes away, he went up to the mountain by himself to pray. Now when evening came, he was alone there. But the boat was down the middle of the sea, tossed by the waves, for the wind was contrary. Now in the fourth watch of the night, Jesus went to them, watching the sea. And when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were troubled, saying, Is that a ghost? And they cried out for fear. But immediately Jesus spoke to them, saying, Be of good cheer, it is I, do not be afraid. And Peter answered him and said, Lord, it is you, command me to come to you on the water. And he said, Come. And when Peter had come down out of the boat, he walked on the water to go to Jesus. You see, Peter had just got back from NAYC. Peter had just seen God do the miraculous when he fed the thousands with two fish and five loaves of bread, right? Peter had just got back from a prayer meeting. Peter had just got back from witnessing the power of God. It was easy for him to get out on the water and walk. Easy for him. He said, but when he saw the wind was boisterous, he was afraid. And beginning to sink, he cried out, saying, Lord, save me. And immediately Jesus stretched out his hand and caught him and said to him, O ye of little faith, what did, why did you doubt? And when they got into the boat, the wind ceased. Those who were in the boat came and worshipped him, saying, Truly, you are the Son of God. You see, Peter had just got back from NAYC, but he got distracted by the things around him. See, Peter was walking with his path with God, but he got distracted with the things around him. I don't care what you've been going on in your life. I don't care how, how anointed you are, the fire that's burning inside of you. You can be distracted by the things of this world. And because of that, God... <clears throat> 
You see, God's going to reach down and touch you. God saved Peter. God saved Peter in this. But let me tell you, he can be distracted. He got distracted by the things around him. Modern cars are too quiet, nice, and comfortable. Heated seats, Bluetooth, and even Wi-Fi. I need some Wi-Fi on, on the car. I mean, for real. Have you seen my data thing? <laughs> my phone's going bye-bye. <laughs> Bluetooth and even Wi-Fi make driving easy and promote drowsiness. You see, the problem with the church today is not that we're not aware of the distractions around us. It's the fact that we're too comfortable with the distractions being there. See, some of you need to go home and you need to get rid of some distractions. You see, you got an Instagram account, you got a Facebook account, you got a Netflix account, you got something in your life that's distracting you from your walk with God. And there's things going on around you that you can't seem to get away from to even to be like Lexi and be a Bible quizzer. You don't have time for that because you're distracted with the things around you. You see, I've been distracted before. I'm sure we've all been distracted before. And sometimes you feel like you can't just get your mind on God. You can't get back to where you need to be. I was going through that. And I'm going to pick on Brother Ferguson over here. <laughs> because when he got in church, I was distracted. And seeing his, uh, the anointing of God that flew, that flew through his family, the power of God, woke me up. See, you're going to go through some distractions, and you're going to face some things, but God's always going to send something to wake you up. Because if you can say truth, you can say faithful to God, he's always going to give you a new awakening, a new power that's going to flow into your life. God's going to take away the distraction. You just got to stick around long enough for him to do it. <laughs> See, I don't think you're feeling it. You might be going through some stuff that you feel you can't get out of, but God's going to bring you out. Because God brings you out of no matter what trial, no matter what situation you're going through, God's going to bring you out. You see, my God is too strong. He's too powerful for the, the world to take away my attention from him. He's too powerful for the things of this world to take away my power through him. Mm. Now I see why Brother Derek, why Brother Derek has a hard time keep going. I feel like shouting. <laughs> you would stand with me. I know that's short, but you're all happy. There's no game on tonight. You're all right. You see, I don't care what the devil throws at you because there's always going to be a new situation. There's always going to be a new problem. And you're going to become comfortable with the things around you. And you're going to become distracted by the things that you see and the things in your school and your work. But you see, my God's a healer. My God's an anointed. You see, Brother Matt, he should be distracted right now. Sister Jessica, she should be distracted right now. But they got their mind focused on God. They got their mind focused on the things that God is doing. See, healing is going to come to them because they're focused on God. They're focused on what God's doing in their lives. They don't care about the distractions in their body. Amen? You would just raise your hands right now. Lord, I ask that you would, you would give us a new awakening. Lord, that you would give us a power, God, to, 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 over the distractions of this world. Lord, the, the, the distractions that come against us, the, Lord, the distractions that come against our families, Lord, that you would, you would awaken us. Lord, that we would realize that when we go down these roads that we're going down, we're not just going down ourselves, but we're taking people with us. We're taking people with us down this destructive road. Lord, that we could keep our eyes on you, that we keep our mind focused on you. Lord, I ask that you would, you would bring an awakening spirit into this house, God. Lord, that this revival that we experienced on last Sunday night, Lord, Lord, that we wouldn't be able to be distracted by the things of this world. Lord, that what we felt last Sunday night, Lord, we would not be distracted throughout this week, throughout what we felt this week. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus the Come on, if you would sing this with us. Jesus at the center. All of my attention. Of Jesus all. at the center of all my accomplishments, of all my workplace, to the of my school. It will it always be, it's always been you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. Jesus. Lord, keep our eyes focused on you. Matters. Keep our spirits focused on you. Nothing in this world will do. Hallelujah, God. Oh, yes. Jesus, you're the center. 
That's the way I know to deal with distractions is to everything refocus on the Lord. Amen. I wonder, I think tonight that Jesus we ought to just flood this altar and lift up our hands and, and commit ourselves to focusing in on Jesus. So we got to focus in on so many other things. The only way to, to deal with distraction is to focus on what matters. And you get so focused on what matters, but so the distraction no longer is an issue. It no longer is a distraction because you're focused. Hallelujah. Come on, would you come down here and lift your hands in this altar tonight and just call on God? Lord, I, I want you. I want you to allow me to refocus. It will always be. Always be Jesus. Jesus. Oh, yeah. Jesus. Hallelujah. Nothing, Nothing else matters. Oh, Lord. Nothing in this world will do. Hallelujah. Oh, Jesus. Jesus you're you're the, the center. up tomorrow saying I woke up this morning with my mind stayed on Jesus you don't have to switch songs but um, that's that's what's got to happen and if you don't wake up in the morning and your mind's not stayed on Jesus you got to wake up in the morning and, and get your mind stayed on Jesus and that's not not necessarily easy but it's got to happen it's got to happen. i got to wake up tomorrow and serve God the whole day. Serve God. God bless you tonight, Sanctuary. Give all of these young people a big hand. I'm so proud of them. I'm so proud of them. So thankful. Thankful for